I want to welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ to this special time of celebration together as we witness this wedding ceremony. This is an exciting moment that we all get to have the privilege to participate in and as we are in awe of what God is doing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for creating this day, for bringing us together, and for creating Gary and Tina. We are in awe of you and your work in this couple's life. I ask that you would bless this time of celebration and that you would guide and lead us in this ceremony. We desire to honor you with this time. I ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we're here. And I think we can say, uh, I think we can all say that it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> I, encar I encourage you both, Jerry and Tina, to look around. Take a breath. And live in this moment. As we, are, as we have gathered here to celebrate this time with you, I would like to take this time to share just a few things about marriage and about the God who brought you into this moment. And I think that it is very appropriate that today is the start of a new year. And with that, we often look at what we have experienced in the past, the last year, and we look forward to this new year, a new beginning, and it is great that we get to celebrate this time as a new beginning for you, too. I want to begin with a scripture from 1 John 4, verses, 4, uh, verses 7 through 10. It says this, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins or the atonement for our sins. God has intended for relationship to be rooted and grounded in love. Just as God has communicated his love for us by sending his son Jesus into the world, we, being created by God, communicate our love for each other. And one of those ways is by having a wedding. A wedding to communicate to each other that you, Jerry, and that you, Tina, love each other and are committed to loving each other through a marriage covenant. Marriage is a unique way that God has ordained to reflect his love for his people. Godly marriage is something that is based on the foundation of God's love, and it shows the reality of God's love in a very practical way between a man and a woman through covenant. And while our world is full of agreements between two parties or people in what we call contracts, and uh, you encouraged me to integrate this into here, and, and so I, w I did want to talk about that. Marriage, though it is often viewed as a contract, really godly marriage is a covenant. And being a covenant, it transcends the earthly idea of an agreement. And it's based on the fact that God himself is the hinge on which marriage hangs. So I'm going to go through kind of the differences between uh, a contract and a covenant in marriage in particular. We know that marriage is sacred, and while a contract is a common legal document regulated by the state. A covenant is 
a sacred moral agreement overseen by God. A covenant is an agreement between three because it involves God himself. And while a contract is based upon mistrust between two people, a covenant is based upon trust between two people and God. In other words, it's designed to encourage the growth and the depth of relationship through trust. A contract is written to create limited liability, while a covenant is accepted to embrace unlimited responsibility. A covenant is not 50-50. It is 100% and 100%. Completely, all in for each other. A contract is embedded with opt-out or terminal clauses, whereas a covenant is intended to be permanent because God is part of this and he is permanent. He is everlasting. And he is the vital part of this covenant. The marriage covenant is permanent. A contract demands joy through mutual benefit, but a covenant seeks joy through mutual sacrifice. Covenant is self is a, is a self-sacrificial kind of thing, and it's built on sac- self-sacrificial love. When we die to ourselves, it produces fruit like joy that sustains and energizes others and each other. So what therefore God has joined together in this covenant, let not man separate. So as we think about marriage being a covenant established and mediated by God, it's good to recognize it as a way in which God expresses his love for us. Marriage is a picture of God's relationship with us. Marriage communicates and is a witness to us of the good news of who Jesus is and what he reveals to us about who God is. That God loves the world. He wants to be with his creation, not distant from it. In marriage, there is this picture of simply longing to be in each other's presence. I think the first time we met, we just talked about, we talked about that, you know, just wanting to be together. And it seems so very basic and simple, but it is so essential to just want to be with each other. The togetherness of a relationship is reflected in God's desire to be with his people. We are told that God so loved the world that he sent his only son, Jesus, as the ultimate expression of his love for us. God's love was revealed, or you could say communicated, manifested to us through Jesus. Jesus died for us so that we may have life. This is reflected in the fact that in marriage we do have to die to ourselves and become a new person. No longer will it just be Jerry or just be Tina. It will be Jerry and Tina. We sacrifice ourselves, our old self, replacing it with a new person to love and to be life-giving for each other. So the means by which God has made it possible to be uh, with us, for him to be with us, was given by his son, Jesus. And this brings us into relationship with him. We know that with relationships come struggles and conflicts at times. We see this in humanity's struggles with God. In fact, the name Israel itself means to wrestle with God. Yet, we know that God did not abandon his people. When they were having some difficult times, uh, God still pressed into that relationship and made a way through Jesus. And I encourage you both to press into relationship with each other. Press into each other when things get difficult. When things are challenging, face your challenges together. Don't run away from each other. Run towards each other. Even when it seems like it's the hardest thing to do. Remember that God did not allow anything to get in the way 
of making relationship possible. God is communicating to us all his love for us, even in this moment. We simply need to receive and be receptive of that love when it comes to each other and when it comes to God. We are reliant on God's love for us. God's love for us is not dependent on how much we have done to try to deserve it, but God loves us first. And that's uh, this thing of loving each other even when it's difficult sometimes, right? It is only from this kind of love, God's love, that you will be able to continually pour out your lives and love for one another. As you come to understand how loved you are by God, it deepens your love for one another. God does not run out of love for you. When we love from our own strength, it will dry up eventually. But when we receive God's love continually, it allows us then to also give love from him as the source of love. So like I said before, this love is life-giving. God desires for you both to be in a loving, life-giving relationship. God is the one who we rely on for that love and life, and he is able to do that because Jesus died for us. He rose from the grave for us and is now alive at the right hand of the Father for us. He is alive, and it is through him that we have life and can love each other and give that life to each other. So, to wrap this all up, I know it wasn't two hours, but to bring this all around, God's covenant with us is an expression of his love for us. And this ceremony of this wedding is an expression of your love to each other in the form of a covenant. As you live out this covenant, may it not only be an expression of your love toward each other, but may it be a witness to all of us of God's love toward his people that we may embrace this good news. And we are celebrating today this good news of you two coming together in this time. We are going to go, uh, we're going to hear a song now by Erica and Sherry will be playing. the 
be asking you questions of promise uh, towards each other, so um, you can hold hands, by the way, if you want. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you first, Jerry, um, I'll ask you two questions, and you can respond with I do or I will. Okay. You know? Do you, Jerry Ross, take Tina Brackman to be your wedded wife, to live together in marriage? I do. Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor her, and keep her, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, in joys and in sorrows, so long as you both shall live? I do. All right, Tina. Do you, Tina Brackman, take Jerry Ross to be your wedded husband, to live together in marriage? I do. Do you promise to love him, comfort him, honor him, and keep him, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, in joys and in sorrows, so long as you both shall live? I do. Okay, now we're going to do... The vowel part, and you just repeat after me. I will say it, and then you repeat. I, Jerry Ross. I, Jerry Ross. Take you, Tina Brackman, to take, be my wife. Take you, Tina Brackman, to be my wedded wife. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love and honor you. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. All the days of my life. Your turn. I, Tina Brackman. I, Tina Brackman. Take you, Jerry Ross. Take you, Jerry Ross. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love and honor you. I will love and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Okay. So now it will be time for the rings. We have the rings. All right, so... The rings remind us of the never-ending love of God. They're in a circle, right? Never-ending circle. And rings are known to be special. These rings had to go through a lot of pressure and heat in order to be formed into what they are today. And I know that you both have gone through testing and trial in your lives. 
And your marriage is like a refined jewel that is valuable and precious. So may it remind you of your love and commitment to each other. And uh, you will go first putting it on her. And just repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love and commitment. As a symbol of my love and commitment. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love and commitment. As a symbol of my love and commitment. Good job. Put this back. Okay. I'm going to ask that you all join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing Jerry and Tina together here today. We thank you for being such a good God who loves us and desires to be with us. I ask that you would bless Jerry and Tina as they desire to have a marriage that reflects your love. I ask that you would bless their home, that you would increase their joy and happiness. I ask that you would fan the flame of their love for each other. I ask that you would fill them with your spirit, and that they would produce the fruit of your spirit in increasing measure. I ask that you would bless them and their marriage as a testimony to your goodness. And I ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Well, Jerry and Tina, now that you have made your vows of marriage in our presence and in the presence of God through Jesus Christ, along with the power given to me by the state of Pennsylvania, I now in great joy pronounce you husband and wife. Jerry, you may kiss your bride. Oh, yeah. Well, I am pleased to now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Jerry Ross. Thank you.